on this channel. We're all about trying new things because art is not scary. And the new thing in this video is black watercolor paper. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. And I got a special guest today. <laughs> this is Sully Sullivan. My son was born last year and he's got a little bit of a cold right now. So he's going to go down for a nap, hopefully. <laughs> and I'm going to sit at my desk and do some painting. Hey. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> this year on the channel, I'm all about trying new things. We've done cats and dogs and like this is my comfort zone. I'm way, way out here and I'm loving sharing that with you. Yeah, it's fun. When I started on YouTube, I didn't have any watercolor experience and I was sharing my journey and I'm kind of enjoying getting back to my roots because you don't have to be good at art to make art. Um, with that said, today we're trying black watercolor paper so let's get into it yeah i'm gonna eat those cheeks um. So here's what we're using today. Of course, we are using black watercolor paper. This is 140 pound cold pressed. So just like my usual stuff, except it's black. And I just picked this up at the art store. I'm gonna link a bunch of similar um, papers in the video description. So check for the Amazon links. And if you're wondering what sort of paints you use with black paper, you can use your metallic watercolors or I'm going to be using gouache. And the colors I'm using are, I've got Naples yellow and a permanent permanent white. And then because we're painting Lily of the Valley, I also have two greens. I have olive green and sap green. So I have basic colors. You just need these four colors or something similar if you're painting along. Gouache is great for black paper because it is highly opaque. You also need a palette, a couple glasses of clean water. I've got paper towel for blotting my brushes on. And then I'm probably gonna do this mostly with like a small round brush, something like a number four. So if you're new to gouache, this is it. It comes in a tube and you mix in lots and lots of water and it stays really wonderfully, amazingly opaque. So when it goes on that paper, you're really going to see it. Now you can use your tube watercolors on black paper, but you can't mix in a lot of water. And frankly, when you're working with expensive paint, that's just really wasteful. So get a cheap set of gouache. I'll link a few sets um, on Amazon because you can get some entry level stuff like from Arteza, but you can also use um, the Windsor and Newton ones that I'm using. I've mixed up a couple greens here. I've got a mix of olive and sap green and then a mix of sap green and the Naples yellow. And we're going to start there and uh, paint some Lily of the Valley and we'll start with the leaves. And these leaves are rather large. So I actually switched to my number eight round brush and I'm approaching them the same way I do with most watercolor leaves, trying to do like large fluid motions in my brush stroke and just kind of allow these leaves to flow onto the page. Then I use the tip of that brush to refine the shape ever so slightly, maybe add a bit of a point at the top and then drag those leaves into a bit more of a stem at the bottom. And my Lily of the Valley has started with three large leaves. And then I'm taking a little bit of that lighter green, that mix of sap and Naples yellow. And I'm just kind of playing around with adding like a few little streaks up towards the top of those leaves. I'm still kind of getting my bearings with the black paper. <laughs> um, so I wasn't sure like, are the leaves too dark? Are they showing up? Everything looked a lot darker on camera, but I was seeing like a pretty good result on the paper. And then I wanted to add a couple more leaves and I did a thin one, kind of like it's on an angle. And just a reminder, friends, you can really make a difference to my career as a YouTuber by simply hitting the subscribe button. Please hit subscribe if you love these videos. And then with those leaves done, I was just kind of playing here, just grabbing from that lighter green, adding some little streaks and highlights toward the top of these leaves, blending it ever so slightly. And then finally, I added two curving stems where I'll um, place the flower blossoms, those beautiful white, snow white blossoms. So now we've got four or five large leaves, a couple thin stems, and we're just gonna let that dry completely. 
If you're loving this gouache content, you might be interested in supporting the channel on my Patreon. I release extra videos every month over there, and when you sign up for $2, you get access to all of them. And we take a lot of viewer requests over there, and we always have a good time. There's also coloring pages and worksheets, but I'll let you take a look for yourself. Now I'm gonna come over to the palette and mix water into my white gouache. I wanna get it a nice liquidy consistency. And then once I'm sure that green is dry, I can start layering and placing these beautiful white blossoms. Lily of the Valley is such a great flower to try on your black paper, of course, because the blossoms are so purely white and they're fun to paint because they grow in these long clusters and then there's multiple stems. So there's like cluster upon cluster and you can paint them in these linear stripes. I started with those two stems and added the blossoms and then I just started adding in like these long lines of messy blossoms all together and I'll add the stripes in later. I'm really just painting messy ovals and circles as well if you're wondering about the shape of the flowers and we can refine that shape later. That's the nice thing about gouache. You don't have to get it on the first try the way you kind of do with watercolor so you can continue to layer and play. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm taking a really tiny, I think this is number two round brush, and I'm just adding these little dots along the base of each oval or circle. And that gives me that little um, sort of bell-shaped blossom that the Lily of the Valley is known for. Okay, now I want to grab a really light, bright lime green. This could be that Naples and sap green mixed with even a bit of white. And I am adding to the stems that I already painted by kind of painting um, some little, I'm not even sure what you'd call that, the little bit of the branch that kind of reaches out to the flower. I'm not sure if that's a sepal on this um, plant, but comment below if you happen to know, but it doesn't really matter. We're just painting some little dots to kind of join the flowers to the stems and join those flowers that I painted that didn't have a stem and this is when you really see the, the saggy weight of the blossoms on the, on the branches and the fact that the stem kind of rises up and then the, the flowers are dragging them down with their weight. I'm also placing a little of that light green on the branches, I mean the leaves. <laughs> and then my final thing on the list is to add some shadow to these flowers. And instead of using a beige or a gray, I used a little of the lime green and just did like a little swip, swipe on the left side of a few of the white blossoms. The color of the shadow is dependent on the, the leaves that are surrounding the flowers. And I think it really works on the black paper. The green and white and black are so striking together. And that's it, I'm all done. I'm going to um, just write Lily of the Valley on here. It looks nice for my little practice piece. I can put this in my sketchbook. And that's it, she's all done. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below, black watercolor paper, yay or nay, would you use it? Would you try it? And be sure to hit the subscribe button. As I said, it makes such a difference. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.